20 minutes to go now before the start of the $10,000 second day Omaha Championship. Really pleased to be joined by Barney Boatman, one of the Hendo Mob boys. Barney, you made it second day. Well done. Yeah, thanks for that. It's good to see you ironing out all the players yesterday. Unfortunately, you couldn't actually stick an iron on your shirt today. Well, Barry, judging by those lovely highlights, you know more about irons than I do, mate. Yeah, well, tell, tell me about it. Very good answer, Barney. And I'm glad I told him about I was going to ask him about his shirt. Obviously, it gives him time to prepare for the uh, riposte. Well done. Very good. That's why they call you the humour, obviously. They don't call me that, and they never have. Yes, you called yourself. No, it was the voice yeah. of poker, Barney the humour. Do you want to know about the tournament, or don't you? Yeah, not really, no. You've made the second day. You're a good Omaha player. I'm sure you're going to do really well. Yeah, cheers. well, I mean, it's a great structure, and there's still a lot of play in it. I've got average, or maybe just below average chips, but the, uh, with 22,000 chips in the blinds at two and four, I'm not going to be hurrying to get involved. And, uh, and my table's changed a really lot. It's funny, it started off at the beginning of yesterday. I had Umberto Brenes, I had uh, Barry Goldstein, uh, Rob Holling, Ziggy Stockinger. I looked around, I thought, where's the value? You know, and they've all gone. Uh, all four of them, you know, and uh, now we've got Simon Trump, a chip leader on my table, Pascal Perro, uh, we, we've got uh, Peter Costa, Paul Maxfield, very sort of Midlands feel to it today. And I feel as if it's going to be a bit lively. The chips are there to be had. Simon Trump won an unbelievable pot against Barry Goldstein yesterday, a huge, huge pot. Uh, Barry obviously flopped the nut straight, um, and Simon called him pot size bets on the flop and the turn uh, with just a nut flush draw. And when it came, uh, when he hit his draw, Simon checked and got Barry to, to bet. Um, did I say Barry? Yeah. Yeah. That's right, Barry. Uh, is he? Yeah. he got him to bet with the, uh, with the king high flush draw and Simon raised him. He didn't have enough to pass. So Simon won a pot of over 100,000 there wow. and knocked out one of the most dangerous players. So uh, I, I predicted earlier on that there was going to be an all-European final and uh, I don't know, that's not going to be easy to achieve, but I, I, think, that, I think it will be a European winner. Um, you've had a couple of caches this, this World Series, haven't you? But uh, three, yeah. no, no finals just yet. That's right. A couple of close calls. Uh, I've been twice the last two tables with, with, with very good chips, but it's all kind of gone pear-shaped at the end. So this time I'm kind of tucking myself in behind the front runners, hoping not to peak too early. That's good. That's good. You're not, you're, I've heard you don't like to peak too early anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had no time to uh, prepare for that one. Most of my poker career is yet to come. <laughs> that's good. Seniors next year. Really? Are you 50 nah. next year? I was going to say, uh, you know. Look, um, wishing you all the best. And uh, oh, well, before you go, we've got a couple of minutes. Any coups you want to talk about yesterday where you feel you've either got lucky, you played well, or any particular situation you want to share with us? Well, you know, um, whenever, whenever you hit a flop, it's lucky in this game. Uh, and I hit a few flops early on. I got off to a good start. Um, and I think the secret, the secret for me was that uh, whenever I had aces, I lost a small pot. Whenever, whenever I was up against them, I won a big one. And I've, in a lot of ways, with Potlim at Omaha, you know, it, it's how you play with and against aces that, that makes the difference. Because you will get them a few times during the day. I never won with them once, but I never got too deeply involved with them. So um, there's no big secret to it. But I, I played, um, I played fairly. I mean, like I say, I got a rush early on, and then after dinner, the last three levels, I basically never won a chip. Uh, I had a big setback against Pascal Perot when he hit a bit of a mystery against me, when he had uh, deuces and it came a deuce on the turn. But I mean, apart from that, I didn't get too involved, and today's another day. Just one quick one. How'd you like to play aces? Do you like to get it in early? Do you like to try and get it heads up with aces? Are you going to try and slow play them? Uh, like I say, I, I don't get too excited about aces. I did re-raise once for double suited aces and, uh, and uh, got it heads up and lost the pot anyway. Um, but you know, it's, in Omaha, it's only a pair. You don't want to shop your hand and you don't want to get in too deep. But obviously, if you get a chance where you know it's going to be heads up, you know you're a favourite, and you know that there's going to be so many chips in there that uh, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to play you off on the flop, then uh, there are times when it's the right thing to do. As we get later on in the tournament, you see more and more of that, you know, getting committed pre-flop. But, you know, it's, it really is, to me, it's a game of playing flops more than anything. And uh, as long as it stays that way, I'll be comfortable. Good. Well, I'm sure everyone at home will be wishing you all the best. And, uh, you know, we've been very much. following your uh, progress throughout the day. Thank you. Cheers, Lovely. buddy.